And now, because of it, Brandon Lang has broken knuckles. Good morning, Brandon <laughs> Lang. Good, mo- good morning. Uh, I have two words for Wendell Carter Jr. of Duke. Yeah. D-League or G-League. <laughs> wow. You're seven foot tall, and you can't make a two-foot jump hook with a six-seven guy on you up three with 36 seconds to go. Now, Mike Krzyzewski gets all the credit in the world for being this great basketball coach. Let me ask you a question. Your previous two possessions... You go to Grayson Allen, who draws a foul and gets four, field, four, four free throws in a row. Why not go right back to your senior again and say, Grayson, get us to the Final Four? Why he would call a play to Wendell Carter and not Bagley, yeah. it mind-blowing. I mean, listen, after the debauchery of rounds one and two and the bracket and Virginia and, and taking it on the chin from you guys, in good nature, of course, <laughs> I had to come back and do something solid. And to have Loyola Chicago and, and Michigan and everything, to have that late game on Sunday sitting there, and I knew when I went against Kansas that, that they were going to bite me, and you know what, I, I went against them a lot this year and won a lot of money going against them this year. And they were due to, you know, they were due to get me once, and, and they did. Brandon, um, where does this year stack up compared to others when it comes to upsets and, and when it comes to you know losing money or Vegas going nuts? It, how does this year compare to other ones? Most ever. Most yeah, ever. Most in, ever. In, in my memory, the most ever. And hence the reason why I, you know, I, I struggled in round ones and two. I was one and four going into Sunday and then hit Clemson, blowing out Auburn. And then I went 7-0 and after that on the website. And that led into Sunday, where I dropped Duke, and then I dropped one on Monday, and then I came back the last two nights with Utah uh, and the NIT, and then Illinois Chicago over Liberty. So I'm on an eight and two run. Um, it's been the best tournament for me, um, just with the quality of the calls. And I, I kind of knew it coming because I've been isolating underdogs all year, and this is you know I made one mistake. That's by not using Loyola Chicago in the first two rounds on, yeah, yeah. on Thursday and Saturday. It's the only mistake I made not jumping on their bandwagon then. I, you know, the tight line, they were, they were plus one and a half against Miami. If you think about that for a second, if the kid from Miami makes the front end of a one and one, you know, you're looking at overtime because they're only up one. He misses that, the kid hits the three, um, cluster. And, and here's the thing about Loyola Chicago. Since Cluster got injured and hurt his ankle, um, got a full ride scholarship to Iowa State. You know, now that I've researched it and know how this team has come together, he had a full ride. Played high school ball with Ben Richardson, the other guard, but <laughs> Richardson was a year ahead of him. He went to Iowa State on a full ride, just sat the bench, didn't get any playing time. It was Richardson that talked him into coming and playing at Loyola Chicago, and so that's how he landed there. Since he's been in every game this year, they've only lost. Two games with him in the lineup. Three of the uh-huh. losses were when he was out with a sprained ankle. So think about that. They're thirty-two and five, but they're thirty-two and two with Cluster in the lineup. The um, this uh, sister uh, Jean there from Loyola Chicago, um, uh, she has given up for Lent losing, um, which is going to carry her through Sunday. But not Monday. <laughs> what are the chances they? Uh, what are the chances they advance? It's it's a very favorable matchup with Michigan. It is, yeah. yeah. It's very favorable. Now, people want to talk about Michigan, and listen, I had them over Texas A and M. That was one of the best bets in, in in the run. But if you look at the other three games. They haven't been impressive. They scored 61 against Montana. They scored 64 against Houston. They scored 58 against Florida State. It's like Bruce Weber of Kansas State said, I didn't realize how good they are defensively. Now, if you're looking at just big conference, power five conference talent, because that's what you have to look at when you start handicapping these four games. It's talent. George Mason got here. Um, Wichita State got here. Two 11 seeds that got to the Final Four, and they got blown out because just the talent level went up. But you look at this team. 
They went to Florida on December 6th. I'm talking talent, athletes, guys that can get up and down the floor, and beat Florida at Florida. And then look at the run they've had here. Miami of Florida, ACC, Tennessee, SEC, Kansas State, Big 12. So from a talent standpoint, they're not going to be blown out. They match up really well with Michigan, and I, and I just think if they knock down their threes, they can win the game outright. But I, I don't see them getting blown out, and in a close game with Michigan's problems from the free throw line, I think you've got to take the five and a half. Wow. Uh, okay, so who are you calling to go all the way? I said it last week. I'll say it this week. Nobody's beaten Villanova. If you look at, at Villanova and the game against West Virginia, I don't know about you guys, but I got tired watching the game. It was as physical, pressure, full court press. It just wore down Villanova. And you look up, and they win the game by double digits. Now, the Texas Tech game was sluggish, but I don't know about you guys. I remember when I used to play pickup basketball and, and, and play eight games in one day and wake up on Sunday or two days later. Villanova was tired when they played Texas Tech. They had nothing left. They were worn out from the West Virginia game. Jay Wright even said it after the game in a press conference. He, they wore us out, yet they still figured out a way to beat Texas Tech by double digits. So well-rested, six days to prepare with that team, six guys average double figures. Kansas went into Oklahoma State as a three-point road favorite and lost by 18. Villanova has four losses this year, all by less than four points. Yeah. They blow them out. Double digits again. All right. Uh, one final, uh, anybody, anything else? Just, I just wanted to note the odds here for the four teams remaining to win the tournament. Villanova is 10 to 11. They're the favorite. Michigan is 13 to 5. Kansas is 18 to 5. Loyola Chicago is 12 to 1. Take $100 and bet Loyola Chicago just to root for them. Um, it would be an amazing story, the matchup against Villanova. I just think it's ironic that, think about this. Virginia loses to UMBC. Chaminade upset Virginia when they were number one. Loyola Chicago makes this run, upsets Michigan, and faces Villanova, which the biggest upset in championship history was Villanova over Georgetown. Just keep that in mind, with Villanova being involved against the Cinderella of Loyola Chicago. If we get that game on Monday night, oh, I think the nation will sit back and go, wow, how good is this? Finally, I will ask you, um, it'll be quite a while down the road, but uh, when we get into October and head into the World Series, which two teams will be standing? <laughs> the Dodgers, again. Um, just because of their pitching staff and their bullpen, um, as long as Kershaw stays healthy, just so hard to beat them uh, in a seven-game series. It just is. If you, if, you, if, they, if you can get them in a five-game series like the Mets did, but in a seven-game series you got to see Kershaw three times, not happening. He slayed the Demons um, last year. And then in the American League, I tell you what, man, it's – it's the Yankees. They just yeah. that offense. Yeah. People are going to see it's it's legit. It is with those two knuckleheads, Judge and <laughs> Stanton. Man, oh man, oh man, this is Mantle and Maris all over again. Yeah. Kudos to Brian Cashman. And listen, who knows what midseason moves they'll make to, to pad that lineup? But I think they were close last year. Couldn't get over the hump. I, I think we get the Yankees and Dodgers, which that's baseball. That's big. That'd be uh, that's sort of big TV money right there. All right, uh, Brandon Lang, good stuff. Thanks. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week.